Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with some really bad Bruckner. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. It's this box of stuff that we've talked about before um, here and on ClassicsToday.com. It's Andres Nelson's, who's looking very happy, that nice. Uh, and the Gavant House Orchestra doing Bruckner Symphonies 0 through 9 and Wagner orchestral pieces. So let's start with the bad news. The Bruckner just sucks. Sucks totally. Nelson's has no clue how to conduct this music. He plays it. He beats time. They play the notes. Nothing happens. It's it's just pretty awful. It's, it's, it's an absolute perfect r score. Uh, in the mediocrity department. I can't say it's like the worst ever. It's not completely incompetent. It's just bad. It's just dull. It's it's snoozy. And actually, actually, um, it, it, I was thinking about this. You know, it may not entirely be Nelson's fault. Uh, you know, let's, oh, look at this. Brooker's music is in the Gavond House DNA. No, it's not. That's the point says Nelson's. The Gavant House has been responsible for the three dullest Bruckner cycles ever. Period. First, there was Court Mazur. I mean, a Bruckner cycle that nobody had anything good to say about. It was horrible. Then there was the, the Blomstedt one that was on like the orchestra's own label or some other affiliated label or whatever it was. Also a total snooze. And Blomstedt is generally speaking a very good Bruckner conductor, but his recordings with the Gavant House were, were, were deathly dull. And now there's this one, which has the same negative qualities. Deathly dullness. I mean, what else is there to say? You know, the whole idea of doing this with Nelson's was ridiculous because because, let's be, let's be clear, the Gavandas has done some good individual performances. There was the Decca Bruckner stuff that Blomstedt did with them that was nice. It was quite good. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is that, that DG had this weird idea on paper. It was a paper idea. Let's do Bruckner, Shostakovich, and, and Beethoven cycles with Nelson's. Why not? Why not? He, he exists. They, they should do it because he exists. And let's do it with different orchestras. Frankly, Boston has played beautiful Bruckner under Seiji Azawa. I saw the fifth and the second with them, and they were gorgeous performances. He's the music director in Boston. Let him do things in Boston. I suggested that. Of course, everyone thought I was crazy. Here's the bottom line. Vienna, of course, could have done Bruckner well, but Vienna has already doing Bruckner with Christian Thielemann. Holy crap, we'll be talking about that too. And and so they weren't going to go and do another Bruckner cycle right away with this guy, with Nelson's. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know. All I can tell you is they didn't do it in Vienna. Vienna would have been probably better if they had good sound. TG doesn't even have good sound lately. You know, their sonics are not very, very powerful or clear or interesting or anything. So, so there we have a... a non-starting Bruckner orchestra, frankly. I, you know, I, they say, well, that's the Gavant House. They just have Bruckner, he says, in their DNA. Yeah, he wishes. They don't have it in their DNA. They've done awful Bruckner, probably more awful Bruckner than any other German orchestra. So let's start there. Then you've got Nelson's. Why is he doing Bruckner at all? It's the Bruckner year? Does that mean it's going to sell because of the time of day? It's like Bruckner morning. Everyone get up and instead of having cereal for breakfast, have Bruckner. What's the point? What's his feeling for this music? Where did he hear it? What's his, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, and look, it says their celebrated Bruckner cycle in its unique combination with instrumental pieces from Wagner's operas is complete. The idea for this was obvious to Nelson's. Bruckner loved Wagner's music. He saw its greatness, merits, and achievements. Oh, oh, Gramophone says, Andres Nelsons and his Leipzig players provide a masterclass in the creation of a sound world that perfectly serves their larger purpose. Does that mean anything? Now it's a typical Gramophone thing. It's, it's meaningless. So what do you get by Wagner? The Wagner stuff is better than the Bruckner stuff. 
For Wagner, you get the Flying Dutchman Rienzi Overtures, the Prelude and Liebestad from Tristan, the Meistersinger Prelude, the Tannhäuser Overture, the Lohengrin Prelude, the Siegfried Idyll, the Güterdammerung Siegfried's Funeral March, and the Parsifal Prelude. You get all of those. And, okay, they're not as bad. They really aren't. Take a look at my reviews on classicstoday.com of some of the individual releases um, that came out. I gave up on this after a while, but I have heard them all now. And and they're just they're just a complete, total, disappointing, non-happening. There is no reason in the world why any human being on this planet needs this Bruckner cycle. Nor was there any reason in the world why Deutsche Grammophon, which has excellent Bruckner cycles by the likes of Eugen Jochum and Herbert von Karajan, plus zillions of individual performances by by Sinopoli and Abado, and, and, and I mean, even Telemann did a decent eighth for them. So, you know, there's, there's, there's plenty, Carl Böhm, you name it, they've got it. So why, why on earth did they want to do this? What were they thinking? And why did Nelson's, does, do these artists have no capacity for reflection or, 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 you know, self-criticism or anything that, you've got to ask the question, why are they doing it? Well, the answer is because they can. It's not because they should. It's not because it's good. It's not because it's meaningful. It's not because anyone needs it. It's just because they exist. So it exists. Bravo. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.